Grace and peace to you. Today is Wednesday, October 7th. We're on the road with Luke, interpreting Jesus on the road, and writing, awestruck, everyone praised God, saying, a great prophet has appeared among us. God has come to help us. Welcome to this time of prayer. My name is Kay Huggins and I'm the Parish Associate at Second Presbyterian Church in Albuquerque, New Mexico. You're joining a community of prayer where some are close church friends from Second Presbyterian and some are strangers whose names are unknown to others. You're coming to a place we visit early in the morning or as a midday break or late in the evening. We're blessed to be here and to be together, to soak in scripture, to consider Jesus' way, and to pray for the world and those in need. This is our time of spiritual connection. So if you're new to these devotions, you're welcome to be here and relax. I do most of the work. I only ask that you come with an open heart and an open mind. If you want to know more, read the weekly welcome that's posted each Monday on the web page. We begin today with a prayer that's based on the first half of Psalm 89, verses 1 through 18. I hope you'll read this portion of the psalm today. The refrain is, Your love, O Lord, will I sing forever. Let us pray. O oh God, you alone are wise and good. You never cease to show us the greatness of your love and favor. Above all, you gave us the truth of your promises. Grant us your grace that following you, we may know the joy of your salvation. Amen. O oh, your love, O oh Lord, I will sing forever. Now we traditionally think about John the Baptist as the warm-up act and Jesus as the star attraction. But in today's text, Luke takes pleasure in weaving these two together. Even as the golden cord of wisdom operates through both men's ministry. Listen, I'm reading Luke 7 from the 18th verse through the 35th. John's disciples informed him all these things, and John called two of his disciples and sent them to the Lord, and they were to ask him, Are you the one who is coming, or should we look for someone else? When they had reached Jesus, they said, John the Baptist sent us to you. He asked, are you the one who is coming or should we look for someone else? Right then, Jesus healed many of their diseases, illnesses, evil spirits. He gave sight to a number of blind people. Then he replied to John's disciples, go report to John what you have seen and heard. Those who are blind now are now able to see. Those who are crippled now walk. People with skin diseases are cleansed. Those who are deaf now hear. Those who were dead are raised up and good news is preached to the poor. Happy is anyone who doesn't stumble along the way because of me. Now, after John's messengers were gone, Jesus spoke to the crowds about John. What did you go out into the wilderness to see? A stalk blowing in the wind? What did you go out to see? A man dressed up in reclined clothes? Look, those who dress in fashionable clothes and live in luxury are in royal palaces. What did you go out to see? A prophet? Yes, I tell you, and more than a prophet. He is the one of whom it is written, Look, I'm sending my messenger before you who will prepare your way before you. 
I tell you, no greater human being has ever been born than John. Yet, whoever is least in the kingdom is greater than he. Well, everyone who heard this, including the tax collectors, acknowledged God's justice because they'd been baptized by John. But the Pharisees and the legal experts rejected God's will for themselves because they hadn't been baptized by John. Jesus continued, To what shall I compare this generation? What are they like? They are like children sitting in the marketplace calling out to each other. We played the flute for you, but you didn't dance. We sang a funeral song and you didn't cry. John the Baptist came neither eating bread nor drinking wine. Yet you say he has a demon. Yet the human one, the Son of Man, came eating and drinking, and you say, Look, a glutton, a drunk, a friend of tax collectors and sin sinners. But wisdom is proved to be right by all her descendants. Yesterday, we observed Jesus offering God's grace without regard for deservedness or petition or even righteousness. Today, we see more clearly the expectations he has for the abundant grace that he shares. These expectations should not ex surprise us, but perhaps they could guide us as we seek to live new, the new life that Jesus offers. What does Jesus expect from us? Well, first and foremost, Jesus expects praise of God. When John's disciples asked Jesus, are you the one? Jesus replied with numerous indications of God's realm, where all could hear and see the blind, the crippled, the deaf, the walking, those whose skin diseases are cleared up, the dead brought to life, the good news preached to the poor. These indicators were the very signs of God's deserving praise. But even more abundantly, the signs of God's grace that were active in both the ministry of John the Baptist and subsequently in Jesus' ministry testifies to the reality of God's realm. Indeed, God's realm of the bless, was the blessed result of these men's ministry. But even those who refused the signs and refuse those who were offering God's word and grace. Even the hard-hearted ones ought to have seen the ancient realities of wisdom at work. Signs, authoritative speech, and wisdom. These are all paths into the praise of God, and yet and yet, controversies and resistance continued to build. So let us pray that we may, be, we may see signs, be attentive to Jesus' voice, and welcome wisdom's teaching today and always. But now it's time to say our prayers. And today, Wednesday. We begin with Wednesday's prayers. Let us pray. God of all mercies, we praise you that you have brought us to this day, brightening our lives with the dawn of promise and hope in Jesus Christ. Especially we thank you for the warmth of sunlight, the wetness of rain and snow, all that nourishes the earth. The presence and power of your spirit, the support and encouragement we receive from others, for those who provide for public safety and well-being, 
and for the mission of the church around the world. Merciful God, strengthen us in prayer that we may lift up the brokenness of this world for your healing and share in the saving love of Jesus Christ. Especially we pray for those in positions of authority over others, for the lonely and forgotten, for children without families or homes, for agents of caring and relief. And today on Wednesday, we pray for the church in Asia and in the Middle East. Dear Lord, we seek to be your faithful ones. We seek to live lives pleasing to you. We seek to be led by you, and we seek your care. As we pray for others today, we remember your blessings, announced as beatitudes, but given as grace, and we pray. Jesus, bless all who are poor in spirit today those who are ill and suffering, those who are anxious and full of fear, those who feel at the end of their rope. Give to each we name a glimpse of your realm we remember. Bless all who are mourning today those with tears that are public and those who weep in solitude, those who grieve deaths long since past, and those who grieve the today's deaths. Give to each your comfort. We name. Jesus, bless all who are meek and gentle, weak and mild, unassuming and pushed to the edges of life. Give to each a place to belong, a portion of your good gift of land, a share in common humanity. We name. Jesus, bless those who hunger and thirst for your coming realm. Let them see your grace abounding in this troubled world. We name. Jesus, bless all who give and do mercy that they may be enfolded more deeply in mercy. We name the merciful among us. Bless those who are pure in heart and purpose. Give to them the insight and wisdom that comes only from you. We remember those simple, pure ones. Jesus, bless the peacemakers. May their community expand until all the world knows you as creator and parent. We name the peacemakers. Bless all who are persecuted for your ways in the world. Give them strength through the grace of participating in your heavenly realm and keep them always safe, even in the midst of persecution. Holy God, hasten the day when all, who, when all will know and share and receive Christ's blessing and may they rejoice and be glad, for such is your desire in heaven and on earth. Let us pray our Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. To God indeed be honor and glory forever and ever. Let the people say, Amen. Bless the Lord. Let the people say, The Lord's name be praised. And now as beloved children of God, rejoice in this day which you have received. Know that God is working on behalf of good, not only for you, but for all those you love and those you don't even know. Remember the refrain from the beginning of Psalm 89, Your love, O Lord, will I sing forever. And until we pray again, in so far as it depends upon you, live peaceably with all. <laughs>